If you've been playing around with the Thinkific app store and you may have seen some apps that you can use for creating a better learning experience, you may have seen one of them is Mazetech. And today I want to show you how you can incorporate Mazetech into your Thinkific courses. So before we take a look, my name is Kat Sabello from The Stellar Way. I'm an instructional designer here to help you design, create and launch your online courses. Each week I put a new video here on my YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button so you are notified of new course creation videos. So in our online courses, we may have activities, we may have tasks that we want students to do, or we might have information that we want to give them. And we want to provide that in an engaging way. Now, one of those engaging ways is by creating interactive activities. One that I particularly like is creating scenario-based learning. And what that means is that we're providing the students with a scenario that they have to resolve. And each question they are given has an option that they can choose from. Each of those options has a consequence. And once the student chooses an option, they then see that consequence, which has feedback. Now they can constantly loop around until they get the right answer. But the purpose of this is that they're applying their current experience to try and solve a problem. And in turn, they will then learn the best way to deal with that scenario. Now, there are many that you can create, many different scenarios that you can build. Today, I want to show you one that I have already demonstrated to you, and that is my interactive activities that I've built through Google Slides. So if you haven't seen those before, I will pop the link into the description below of the YouTube video where I've created Google Slides that have buttons. When the student clicks on a button, they get redirected to a new slide. So Mazetech allows us to create something very similar, but a lot easier to build. So let's take a look. Here is my Maze Tech account. Now I just got a test maze in here that I want to show you today. And here is also my Google Slides that I have referred to. Now you may have seen this before. These are the buttons that the student will click and continue. Then they are posed with a question. And here, what I have is every single slide. So I have them all in order. And then I have created particular links behind each button. With Maze Tech, what you can do instead is create a flow, create a really nice structured, um, I guess, flow chart, which is what this scenario based learning activity would look like. It is a series of slides or a series of information that the student would receive that then branch off into different areas based on the choices that the student makes. So with Maze Tech, I can go in, let's let's create a brand new one. I can go into my Maze Tech account, which you can easily create at mazetech.org. And there are free versions, there are paid versions. So I can go in and create a new maze. Okay, I can click on the the down button arrow here. And I could choose from a community template that I might have, or I can select from a PowerPoint presentation so I can export that Google Slides and I can export that into PowerPoint and then upload it. What I'm going to do instead is just create a blank maze and we'll do this quickly together. So I'm just going to call this scenario based learning activity. I have got the free account for this example, so I can't change many things. Um, let me just put it underneath education. Okay, because this will go up into a community and I'll go and create that. I'm not going into every single setting today. What I really want to show you is how we can create a very simple maze here and then how we would link that into Thinkific and then what that would look like on your Thinkific account. So here I'm not going to change anything. I'm not going to change any content. What I now have is I have my start. I want to then add a node to it. So I can click on this node and then I can choose from my nodes here. I also have these nodes on the left hand side. So a node is a next point on the flow chart. Now I can create a scene. I can have a hint. There's there's lots of different types of nodes that I can add. I'm going to add a scene. Now with this scene, I'm just going to go to my actual scene here my first one, and I'm going to put in Jack's question. So I'm just going to copy this here. As I move down, I then have choices. With these choices, I'm going to add these choices here that are on my buttons. So let me just copy and paste that. I'm just using control C on my keyboard. 
Okay, now I want to link these to specific responses. So saying, yes, that's right, or, or no, that's not right. So a, a success and a failed. I'm just going to save this first because I don't have those nodes existing just yet. So what you'll see is my nodes now created. I'll move this over here. And now next to each response, I have a plus button that I can then add in a, a failed or I can add in a correct. So I'm going to put finish on this one, for example. And with this one, I'm just going to go to the actual slide to get the content. Okay, I can add other links in. I can have some settings down here. So maybe I want to link them to a particular section in Thinkific where I have the lesson and I can put the link to the lesson in. Maybe I want to put a YouTube video in there, whatever I like. Okay, I'm then going to put in this one, which is the failed. Now the failed node would then give the student opportunity to test again. This time I'm going to just go back here and I'll just find the slide that has the response here. Now I'm just copying this text in, but I can also insert other information as well. If I wanted to have a video in there for more information, so maybe the student can choose their own path. You know, we can create an experience for the students choosing their own path and then, then they get information that's relevant to what they already know or what they don't yet know. Let me just call this try again. Okay, and again, I can put in particular links in there as well. Okay, so I have my correct and my try again. So we, you can play around with that um, longer. I'm just testing and playing around here. So now let's publish my maze tech and link it into Thinkific and see what the student sees. So here I'm going to click on publish. And then I have a new link that's being created for me. What I want to do in this stage is I want to scroll down. I can put particular tags in the tags here that you can put in are for analytics. So on Maze Tech, they write think of a course. And so you can put a tag in there that then uh, tracks what the student's going through. So then in your analytics and think if it, you can see the student progress. What I'm going to do here is I'm also going to hide the player head. Okay, and I'm going to fit the content to frame. So this means that when the student goes in and sees this from Thinkific, it's within Thinkific. They're not seeing anything else. Um, it's just within the Thinkific player. Now in Thinkific, I'm going to link this into my courses as a multimedia. So as a multimedia, I'm going to use this web link. I'm not going to embed it. I'm going to use this web link. Before I do that, Let's go over to Thinkific and let's have a look at how I can first link in the app and then how I can add this into my lesson. So here in Thinkific, I'm going down to the App Store, which is where I am now, and I'm going to click it on Visit App Store. Once I go into the App Store, I'm then going to search for Maze Tech. So you can see that there's so many different apps that you can use. There's so many different types of apps. And if you scroll down, so many different types of categories as well. Now this one sits within the learning experience. You can also see that it's at the top here for me. So if you do jump down into learning experience, you can then find all of the different apps that will help you to provide a better learning experience for your students. One of them being Maze Tech. So as I go into Maze Tech, I'm simply going to click on install. You can see here that there's a free plan available, but there's also paid plans as well, which give you more features. Once I've clicked on install, I then need to link the two together. So I'm just going to scroll down, accept and install. So very easy to install the two. I then need to log in to Mazetech, which I'm already there. So now that integration is completed. I'm going to return back to Thinkific here and I'll refresh my screen on my app store so that you can then see that I then have Mazetech connected in here as well. So now let's connect my maze tech that I just created, my maze here, this maze here that I've created, I'm going to connect this maze into my course. 
So in Thinkific, I go into manage learning products. I then go into my courses and this is my test account. So there's lots of different courses that I'm testing around with. I'm going to just go into this ebook course here. There's no particular course that you need. You can put this into any course. I've just selected this at random and I'm going to go into add lesson. When I click add lesson, you can see maze tech here which can be confusing. We don't want to click on this maze tech. We actually want to click on multimedia. Now this maze tech is only here so that you remember that you can use maze tech. You can then open up the app and create a maze. But when we actually put it into our course, we click on multimedia. When I've clicked on multimedia here, you will see that a lesson that becomes available where I need to click or enter my URL. So I'll come back to maze tech here. And in this editor, I have my web link here. We don't want to use the embedded because we're not embedding it. We're going to put this into the multimedia and think if it will do the iframing for us. So I'm going to copy that link and then I'll paste it here. Okay, and I'm going to call this, do you need an online course? Okay, and then I'm just going to save that. There's some other settings that I can use, but I'm just going to go ahead and save that. The other settings are just if I wish. I don't need to select anything in particular. Okay, let's preview this from the student's perspective. So as a student comes into their course and they come to the lesson here, they then you can see that it's loading from maze tech, but then they see the course. They don't see anything else um, like it's in the maze tech editor here. This is what they see. So we then go in and we start and you can see here that this is my question and I then have responses. I can say, oh yes, I know that feeling. Cool. I can go back and I can restart that. And I can also go in and say, nope, that's never happened to me. I can also restart that. Now remember in this area, I can add a video in. So I can have two different types of video and I might have a video for when it's correct that might be speaking about course plans and just very brief overcap. But then for the people that got the negative answer or got it wrong, I might have a video that goes further into course plans and how they are useful. Moreover, what I can have here as well in the course editor when I'm building a maze is that I might have a different branch that's very, not very long, but much longer for the people that didn't get the answer right and need to have more steps uh, or more information about this particular topic. So it's easy as that to be able to create a maze and then link that into Thinkific. Three easy steps. First, create the maze in maze tech, link the app, to Thinkific if you haven't already done that. And then finally, have the published link from Maztech link that into a multimedia course in Thinkific. I encourage you to play around with Maztech and see and explore how you can create engaging activities for your students. Keep them engaged, help them to learn the content, and most importantly, create these different branching activities so a student can kind of choose their own path Ask me questions in the comments below. I'll be happy to help you to be able to design and, and think about what types of journeys that you can create. Remember, each week I do post a video here on my YouTube channel. So don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell button so that you are notified of new course creation videos. Until next time, happy course creating.